Welcome back to Northwest Small Batch Brewing. I am Stephen, and today, another installment of what can you do with your beer besides drink it? Cook, or in this case, bake with it. Last time I made a uh, cheesy beer bread. This time I'm making a rustic beer bread that's yeasted. Very similar to brewing in some, some instances, and I'll explain some of the comparisons here. It's basically a smash beer version of bread. Uh, you're just using the basics, right? You're using flour, salt, yeast, and instead of water, we're going to use beer. So, let's get started. To start with, I'm measuring out four cups of or 555 grams if you're weighing it like I am of bread flour. Any flour is fine, but bread flour will work just a little bit better. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and put in two teaspoons or 12 grams of sea salt. You can use any salt you want, although some people do believe that you should keep the salt separate as long as you can from the yeast, because salt can kill your yeast using 12 ounces of stout beer, but you can use any kind you want, although you may want to stay away from heavily hopped beers. The secret to making bread like this is to make sure every ingredient is room temperature. So make sure you left the beer out overnight. You don't need the carbonation, so don't worry about that. Just keep it lightly covered to keep stuff from getting into it. The final ingredient going in is one tablespoon of olive oil. Well, I lied. There is one more ingredient we have to add. The most important ingredient, the yeast. So add one packet of bread yeast, which is about the equivalent of two teaspoons or seven grams if you're measuring it out. The next step is pretty simple. I like to just mix it with a wooden spoon until it becomes sort of a shaggy dough. Turn your now shaggy dough out onto a flat surface like the counter and start kneading it by hand for about 10 minutes. Resist the feeling of wanting to add more flour. Here's your next tip. There's no need to add flour. The more you knead it, the dough will start to come together and it will stick to your hands less. And the more you do it, it'll become smooth and silky. You do not need to add more flour or it will end up drying it out. Throw a damp towel on it and then proof it for about two hours at 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. To build your own proofing box, take your temperature controller from your fermentation center and use that with a heating mat to heat up your microwave and use that as your hot box. Okay, it's been a few hours. The bread has doubled in volume at this point, so we're going to take it out, punch it down. We're going to form it into a very tight ball so it has a nice solid skin across the top. Then we're going to put it inside a piece of parchment paper, back in that same container, back in the fermentation chamber for about 45 minutes to an hour to rise a second time. Okay, so while all that was happening, preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit with the Dutch oven in the oven as well to heat the Dutch oven. And now you're going to take your dough that's ready. You're going to score it however you want to score it. That way it'll rise properly in the right direction that you want it to go. And you're going to pick it up with the parchment paper out of its little container, put it into the very hot Dutch oven, put the lid on the Dutch oven, put it in the oven, and give it 30 minutes at that temperature. Okay, once you've hit your 30 minutes, go ahead and reduce the temperature of your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and remove the lid to your Dutch oven and let it cook for another 10 minutes. Okay, the bread should be done now, so go ahead and pull it out of the oven. Use the parchment paper to reach and lift it out of that hot pot and uh, put it onto a wire rack for cooling. Now it's time to do the sound test. Flip it over and tap it a few times on the base. It should sound hollow on the inside if it's done. Let the bread Cool down on a wire rack for at least 30 minutes before you cut into it. Well, here we are, folks. We made it to the end. Um, smells amazing. This is my favorite part, of course. Um, I'm going to sort of cut it right down the center for you guys. And then you can kind of see the inside, maybe. 
Uh, still steaming. It's been about half an hour. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, how do you even wait any longer than that? Uh, yeah, it's cooked through. It looks good. I probably would let it cool a little bit more. I can definitely smell the stout. So cool. I'm just going to cut off a piece here. I'm not going to use this for sandwiches, but... Um, easier said than done to get a piece of you know butter on here come on rude there you go okay geez there you go man simplest kind of bread the most basic ingredients oh yum The last, the last video I did on making, you know, using your beer to make other stuff besides just drinking the beer, the bread was good, but man, there's something about yeasted dough that you get that fermented yeasted flavor in there. It's a game changer, man. Wow, this is good. Seriously, you should try to make this uh, if you want. This is probably the easiest kind of bread to make, and it is so good. I'd say it'll last you about a week. If it starts to dry out, just spritz it with a little piece, of, a little bit of water, and then put it in the oven for a little bit, and it'll actually soften it up. After that, you can make bread pudding with it. You can make bread crumbs. Good stuff. No preservatives. So it won't last as long as your Wonder Bread, but you know. At any rate, let me know in the comments uh, if you like this video, and if you want me to continue to occasionally throw in a video like this on how to use your beer and other things besides just throwing it in your belly. And uh, until next time, thanks for stopping by, and make sure you um, subscribe so you can find out when my next video comes out, and I'll see you then. Cheers. <laughs>